Hello everybody, my name is Michaela Pascoe, I'm from Victoria University and today I would like to talk to you about how yoga can reduce stress in people with depression and anxiety and also in people that are healthy as well. So we're all familiar with stress, I'm sure we've all experienced it in our lives in one way or another and of course stress is important and the stress response system is also important to help mobilize us and keep us safe in situations of a threat. But we also know that when stress is really persistent or ongoing that it can result or contribute to psychological problems. We know that when somebody does experience stress that they have experience a number of physiological changes things like uh, increases in heart rate and blood pressure and also an increase in cortisol. This activation or fight flight response, as I was saying, can contribute to symptoms of depression and anxiety if it's ongoing over a long period of time. And obviously, therefore, it is important to find ways to manage our stress. And of course, yoga has become really commonly practiced and a really popular way to manage stress in our modern societies. And there is research to demonstrate the efficacy or impact of yoga on symptoms of depression, anxiety, and stress. The research shows that it can decrease these. And in the context of this, I conducted a systematic review where I looked at the impact of yoga on various physiological markers of stress. And this was in individuals that had symptoms of depression. And we did identify that yoga was associated with a reduction in these physiological stress markers that I was talking about before. So these things being blood pressure, heart rate, levels of cortisol, for example, but there were some limitations in the studies that were included. Many of them didn't include any active control group. So often they were compared to a weightless control group. So we couldn't really understand if the impacts were resulting from the yoga or just from being involved in a research study and having some sort of uh, increased attention or activity in general. So this led to the conduct of a later meta-analysis where I also looked at the impact of yoga on physiological markers of stress, but I only included randomized control trials, abbreviated here as RCTs, that had an active control group. And so the active control group could have been anything. In some situations, it was a social support group, or in other situations, it may have been a non-yoga based exercise group. And also this study included people that didn't just have depression symptoms, it was also people in the general population. I looked at a whole range of outcomes as listed here, but we won't spend too much time on this because I'll go through them more closely on the next slide. So the results of the meta-analysis essentially showed that yoga resulted in a decrease in systolic blood pressure. You can see here from the little starred asterisk of about 5.62 millimeters of mercury and a decrease in diastolic blood pressure of about 3.63 millimeters of mercury. This N is the sample size. So this was in 982 individuals for systolic blood pressure or 765 individuals for diastolic blood pressure. There was also a significant decrease in resting heart rate and in cortisol levels in saliva. So the cortisol levels decrease was seen to be a small effect size. You can see here that this was written as a SMD, standardized mean difference rather than the raw score. And our effect sizes are small is two, medium is 05 and large is 08. And of course we had an effect size of 0 0.51. So it was considered a small effect size. And the resting heart rate change was 3.2 beats per minute or a decrease of 3.2 beats per minute. I just wanna point out that aerobic exercise is shown to decrease heart rate by about five beats per minute. So it wasn't quite as effective as aerobic exercise, but it was still somewhere within the range. I also want to point out that the changes in systolic and diastolic blood pressure were almost five and four beats per minute, 5.62 and 3.63 beats per minute. And the research has shown that decreases um, of, oh, sorry, not beats per minute, of millimetres of mercury. And the research has shown that decreases of about two millimetres um, of mercury can result in a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. So that can be considered a clinically relevant or meaningful decrease in blood pressure. So the take home message essentially is that yoga can result in clinically relevant decreases in blood pressure. Yoga can result in meaningful decreases in heart rate. It can result in a decrease in cortisol, but we need to further explore the clinical relevance of this. And that the evidence for changes in inflammatory markers is a little bit lacking. Further research is required 
So if we just go back to this original slide here, you can see that there was no significant difference, but our sample size was quite small when we looked at C-reactive protein and interleukin-6 as markers of inflammation. So we do need to further explore that. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed today's presentation.